All right, thanks everybody for joining. We've got head coach Mike Peterson here. If you have a question for him, go ahead and raise your hand, I'll call on you. Raphael Haynes, we'll start with you, go ahead. Hey coach, hope all is well today. And coach, I wanted to ask you, since you've taken over the coaching duties, what has been the biggest difference so far after, what, maybe a week? So what, have the, what is the biggest difference so far you've noticed? Uh, one second, you are muted, Coach. I think the biggest difference is just that, uh, you know, instead of Nikki delivering kind of the big picture messages, that, that's more me now, okay? Um, and uh, I have to have more of a big picture view of kind of what's going on and, and what the message is and what our direction is. But, you know, I have a little more voice in practice, I suppose. Uh, uh, than, than before. But as I've said, th this was a very cooperative situation before. It's going to remain a very cooperative situation now. Uh, Darius and I are very much working together. And so it hasn't been that big a difference for me. And again, I, I'm fortunate that uh, I was a head coach for a really long time. And so, uh, you know, all I have to do is kind of what I've always done and I'm not having to personally reinvent the wheel. Brandon Sudge with the AJC, go ahead. Hey, uh, Coach, I wanted to follow up on that. Um, can you speak on your team's willingness to adapt to the coaching change and how they've overcome that on such short notice? Sure. Well, and, and again, that's that's one of those questions that, you know, I, I can give you my answer, but it's probably a question that's more uh, informative to ask them, right? Uh, and they've been great. I mean, we frankly did not miss a beat uh, in practice in terms of just doing, doing our jobs, right? Practices have been really good, really spirited. The players have responded very well to both Darius and I, but that's not a surprise. These players have responded just incredibly well the entire time both of us have been here over the course of the last three and however much it is now years. So, so that that really was not uh, not a surprise to me at all. Uh, they've really really just responded well and and frankly it doesn't feel like we've missed a beat but again that's probably one of those deals that you ask the players you might get a different answer i don't know but for me it's just been very smooth we've just gone about our business and tried to get better each day we'll go to spencer nussbaum with the next go ahead spencer hi coach nice to talk to you again um i want to talk a little bit about the backcourt uh, you guys have so you obviously have Kennedy in year two, Odyssey coming in, um, Courtney obviously talking trash and, and being a great player. Um, do you get no. the sense that it's been no, not Courtney? <laughs> do you do you get the sense that it's been you know iron sharpening iron? Um, and do you feel like even with this kind of short training camp, you've seen progression in the past couple of weeks? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean. You know, Kennedy and, and, and Courtney played together last year, okay? But but really, okay, by the time Courtney was out of the COVID protocols last year, because she, you know, she didn't get to join us for training camp, all of that, right? Um, by the time she got there, she didn't play much with Kennedy, and then Kennedy sprained her ankle, right? And then Kennedy was out. So it's not like the two of them had this whole year together with training camp and 34 games and that just was not the case. They played together a little, right? And we never practiced in the bubble, just like everybody else, hardly ever practiced in the bubble, right? So, so their, whatever you want to call it, chemistry or ability to play off of one another is very much a work in progress, even though they played together last year, right? And then Odyssey, while a, a, a great player, former All-Star, okay, and a veteran in this league, and, and a person that has a voice that's really good about directing traffic and how we ought to approach things. Okay. She's never played with either one of them. Okay. So 
this is going to be a work in progress. Okay. Aerie is a rookie, never played with any of them. Okay. And, and Aerie brings some really interesting stuff uh, to the table. Uh, and then frankly, here in a couple of days, when she clears protocols, Tiff Hayes is going to join us. Okay. Uh, a former all-star, a former all-league player, our first year here when we won 23 regular season games. And so this is not going to happen overnight. I mean, just isn't, okay? This is going to be an ongoing process of, of those players learning to play together and a whole group learning to play together, right? Because it's not just, hey, you've got a bunch of guards and that's all that matters. No, we've got really good bigs. I mean, Elizabeth, Mo, Cheyenne, uh, Tiana, right? We, we've got a very nice group of bigs. So sometimes I tease a little bit about how small we are. It's not like we're going to play five guards. You know, we're going to have two good bigs on the floor all the time. And so it's just a matter of everybody getting used to playing with one another. It's everybody feeling one another's uh, strengths and weaknesses. It's about me giving some direction about here's how we want to play. Here's lineups we're going to run. Here's sets and actions we want to make sure that we're running, okay? Given guidelines about what that looks like, given structure about how we do it. But uh, eventually, I think this group's got some really interesting possibilities. And, and uh, I told the team the other day, if we play the right way, okay? And it's a hard way to play. It's not comfortable, okay? But if we play the right way, we're a problem, I think. If we don't play the right way, we got problems, right? So I'd rather be a problem than have problems. Uh, Brain and such, we'll go back to you. Um, Coach, I want to ask you about um, Onique. Um, so I don't know if you can remember anything from her first training camp. As a second round pick, I had to imagine she wasn't a lot to be on the roster. Can you speak on her, her kind of, kind of like her uh, rise, I suppose, is from her first training camp to now as a viable option? Are you sure? Done? Yeah, sure, of course. Um, and most did a very good job in her in her uh, three years, right? She's improved in a lot of areas. She, she understands this league a lot better, right? Uh, she's she's really improved schematically, defensively, right? I would say a most first year, her, her biggest adjustment was on the defensive end, right? There's just a lot of things that happen in this league that don't happen in college. And so, you know, her ability to adjust and adapt defensively, I think, has been the biggest thing. But, uh, I mean, the thing that you never question about, about Monique Billings is, is she going to bring energy? I mean, she's... When Mo enters the game, whether it's at the start or at some point along the way, okay, she's going to make something happen now, okay? She's going to play with great energy. She's going to play with great enthusiasm. She's going to play with great athleticism. Um, you know, she's going to make stuff happen. And so I would say that, you know, she's, she's done a nice job. She's worked on her game. She's developed uh, offensively. She's developed defensively, uh, you know. And, and as you said, she was, uh, you know, a second-round pick, Um but she's earned her place in this league. You know, players earn their place in this league. There, there's a lot of early first round picks from four years ago that aren't in this league anymore. Okay. You earn your place in this league. Uh, and Mo has earned a place in this league. Cheryl Coward, Pete, go ahead. Hi, you uh, mentioned uh, some of the um, attributes of the more experienced guards, but uh, can you give us an update on? Uh, how Ari McDonald is doing. I know you've mentioned her speed and her IQ before and how she's melding with the team and what she brings. Yeah, she's done great. I mean, she's done just great. You know, uh, Ari's a super focused, uh, very high energy. Uh, she's a, a great, she's a sponge. Uh, I mean, she always wants, she's always asking questions. She's always pulling me aside one-on-one -on -one and talking to me and I'm pulling her aside one-on-one -on -one and talking to her. So um, she's done phenomenal. You know, she's been a great teammate. Uh, she has shown flashes of real brilliance. Okay. 
And like every single rookie in every single professional league in the history of sports, she's just got a ton to learn. You know, it's just a different game. Everybody's bigger, faster, stronger. Uh, the, the gaps that were there in college that she could get into close a lot faster here. Uh, the players that she's got to get the ball over or around when she's making plays are just a lot longer and a lot quicker now. Okay. So, but having said that, it's been great. And, and she's uh, for sure a part of uh, the plan. She's a part of the scheme. She's a part of what, what will allow this team, I think, to play in a uh, very non-traditional way and have some success. So, you know, uh, like a lot of the players we've had in camp, I'd give her an A for training camp, but most of our players, I would give an A. And Spencer Nussbaum, we'll go back to you for the last question. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about shot selection a little bit. Um, you know, obviously Courtney's gonna get hers from 16 feet. Kennedy's gonna get hers in the paint. Um, and you have a few new stretch bigs uh, but spacing is still always going to be a question. I'm curious, you know, how much you're addressing that in training camp and what that's going to look like compared to last year. All right. So uh, I'm a nerd. Okay. Uh, I'm analytics man. Okay. And uh, I've been that way for 40 years before someone decided they were called analytics. We used to call them stats. Okay, and it's the same information being applied in a different way. Now there's more information available now than there was 40 years ago. But uh, so that's such a good question, Spencer, because uh, on the first day of practice, we gave the players an offensive analytics uh, report. And it dealt with shot selection by range, shot selection by action, shot selection by type, and what we want going forward. And it addressed the strengths of the players on this team. So I went and analyzed uh, Odyssey, who's new to us, but has played in the league. I went back and looked at her last year, Cheyenne, Tiana, the whole, all the folks that have played Shatori, who have played for other organizations that have now come to us, right? And so that's something we've talked about a lot, okay? And we have tracked very closely what are shot selection by distance, shot selection by type, and shot selection by action have been every day in practice and in both preseason games. And we have very specific targets that we want to hit by shot selection by distance, shot selection by type, and shot selection by action. And the players are <laughs> I would say overly aware okay, of what our expectations are in those areas. And they have been phenomenal at applying it. I mean, just next level phenomenal at applying the things that we're asking them to do. Okay, so great question. And yes, we're very focused on it. And yes, I'm also very um, careful and very cognizant that uh, players play, okay? And I don't ever, ever, ever want a player to be worried about taking a shot. Like, oh, this is kind of a long mid-range. Should I not shoot if I'm wide open? Hey, if you're a good long mid-range shooter, shoot it. If you're not, then don't. It's not that hard, okay? Um, but yeah, that is something we've really addressed. And it's something I tried to balance with having our players have the freedom to make plays and the freedom to play, because th th that's how the best players play best. And that's all I want to do. I, I want to give them again, structure, guidelines, expectations need to be super clear. Okay. And then our players need to play with tremendous freedom and tremendous energy and tremendous enthusiasm. And if you do that, it usually works out. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Thanks, everybody. All right. We've got Michaela Cowan here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you.
Spencer Nussbaum with the next. We'll start with you. Go ahead, Spencer. Michaela, I just want to start off with a very general question. Um, if you could talk about your you know, expectations for the season and what you specifically are going to add to the team. Yeah, um, for the season, you know, I, I want to win games. Uh, hopefully, you know, this is a, a healthy season and everything goes to plan. Um, the team kind of comes together, plays as a unit, you know, plays fast. Uh, I think we're really, really good team, really deep. Uh, we got a lot of talent here. And I just want to add as much as I can, you know, with defensive abilities, whether it be hitting shots when I need to, getting important stops, just any way I can fit in and make the team better, I want to do that. Brandon Such, AJC, go ahead. Hey, uh, so I was reading something earlier. It said that that y'all as a team, that y'all have this sense of like a swagger. Um, you guys have some swag. And can you give me an example of how you guys see that in practice or anywhere? I think we got a little bit of swag, for sure. I mean, this team is definitely full of characters and a lot of different personalities. And that's important to, you know, have have those different type of perspectives, different type of outlooks. And coming together makes for, like, a really unique program, unique group. And, uh, I mean, I, I'd say we all have our own type of swag, our own type of, you know, style and finesse, whatever it may be. But... We for sure like our fun group. We have fun together and uh, we got a little bit of swag for sure. Next question is from Raphael Haynes with the three point conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Michaela, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm well. So it's media day, so we're going to keep it light today. No serious questions. I want to ask you who is the, um, I guess, the funniest person for the dream? Because you all have a lot of characters with uh, Diane, Courtney. Yeah. Kennedy and Tiff is not even there yet, so I can just imagine what it's going to be like. But can you just speak on that as far as the funniest and how much fun you all have? Honestly, it's like every day somebody just has their day. So every every day is different. Like the whole team can be funny one day, one person can be one day. It literally is whatever day, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just anybody kind of pops out and just, you know, is that person that day. So this the whole team is just a fun group, and I'm excited to – hopefully be a part of it and, and get the season going. And just a quick follow-up. Does that make it more fun and just easier to show up for work and to practice and or play? Absolutely. I mean, when you come in, you know that the day is going to be full of, well, first off, you know, handling our business and practicing and taking, taking what we do seriously. That's already a given, but adding on top of the fun and just like having a good time and, making it light in that sense makes it way, way easier to get up in the morning and, and get going and put the, put the jersey on the shorts on and, and get to practice for sure. B. Terrell with Windsider, go ahead. Hey, Michaela, good afternoon, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Doing well, doing well. So earlier, um, at the beginning of training camp, um, at the time, Coach Nikki stated that you were one of the players that really came out and right away kind of um, impress the coaches and kind of like had everybody like, wow. So what is it that you bring that you feel has set you apart? Um, obviously in the games, you've had some great performances and then, you know, um, going on to fighting for a spot on this roster. What is it that sets you apart or that you feel like that valuable asset that allows you to contribute? Yeah. Um, I think that when I'm really set on myself and I truly believe in what I can do and I'm just kind of calm out there, I can be, you know, my demeanor and my competitive nature, my ability to like get in the stance and get a stop when I want to, or just like talking and, and, and being that kind of just rally together everybody. And, and uh, my voice isn't the biggest on the team, but I definitely feel like I can add on, you know, to help the group and, I think just being here in my presence, I think, is something that people kind of, you know, take notice of and uh, just being me, honestly, just being Michaela Kellen. And Spencer Nussbaum, we'll go back to you. Go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. Could you talk to us a little bit about um, Fluid Clothing Brand and why it's important for you to have passions on and off the court? Yeah. So uh, the one day collection, uh, I just started a couple months ago. Um, but yeah, it's, it's about basically the idea that one day, you know, the world will find peace in allowing individuals to, you know, fully be who they, who they are, fully embrace themselves. And in return, you know, the world will 
start to see like these different characters, different individuals, and uh, completely, you know, embrace all the dynamics they have in themselves and, you know, the fluidity, the duality, all that. And uh, my basically, my goal is to just empower a lot of young folks who don't feel they have, you know, their voice or much of a presence in this world. I want them to know, like, obviously it's through clothing, I want them to know that they're not alone. You know, they have many outlets, they have people who are can relate to what they experience, you know, day-to-day -day basis. So I just want to make, you know, clothing line a platform for everybody, for all, inclus all inclusive. All right, thanks so much, Michaela. Thank you very much. All right, we've got Ari McDonald here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. First, we'll go to Brandon Sudge with the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Uh, hey, Ari. Um, so I wanted to kind of get some of your perspective on uh, training camp and how things have gone for you. Obviously, a coaching change in the middle of it. I mean, how have you had to kind of take all this in and kind of it? kind of adapt over these last couple of weeks? Yeah, um, everything's been moving fast for me uh, this past, what, three weeks to a month. So, I mean, I'm just taking it in stride. Um, I've been surrounded by helpful people, whether that's supporting staff, coaches, my teammates. I mean, they've been making it easier for me. And um, it's been making my training camp adjustment really smooth. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm around the best people. And so I'm glad I could be here. Next question comes from B. Terrell from Made for the W. Go ahead, B. Hey, Ari. Good afternoon. How are you today? Good. How are you? Doing well, doing well. So you recently signed and became a part of the Nike family. How does that feel to um, go into your rookie year with a deal being represented by one of the leaders in um, athletic footwear? It's, it's kind of surreal. Like, I keep thinking, like, dang, like, I really just signed with Nike. But, I mean, it's a blessing. And when you just think of like, I grew up wearing Nike from head to toe. So just to be a part of the family, like it means a lot to me. Next question is from Chantel Jennings from The Athletic. Go ahead. Hey, Ari. Um, Coach Peterson was in here earlier and he was talking about how all the players at the beginning of the season got like a deep dive analytical packet about their game and their shot selection. I was curious for you if you've ever been able to sort of see your game broken into a stats based thing like that and what it sort of informed you about your own game and what you can do at the pro level. Yeah, that was it was crazy uh, just to see how like coach Mike breaks down stuff. I was like, yeah, that's never happened before. But I mean, it was good to see and just, he's always been telling me, he's like, you're a good shooter. And he was just saying, he always tells me every day, like the world wait for, wait for a great shooter. So I've just been keeping that in mind. He just always tell me like, the shots that I took in college that I missed was like, you didn't have your hand on the ball. So I mean, just for him to break down my game like that and my shot selection, like it's very helpful. And I'm definitely keeping that in mind every day. Next question is from Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Ari. Um, so I think usually with rookies, there are nerves on and off the court. But, I mean, you seem to be having a pretty good time so far in training camp. Could you just talk a little bit about what the team culture has looked like uh, compared to Arizona and who you're getting close with on the team so far? I know it's early on, but, you know, who are some of your favorite teammates so far? Yeah, the culture is definitely different from college. In college, you know, the coaches are more like directing, but like when you get to the pros, it's more like player led. So like if something like breaks down, you have, you know, the players stepping in and they're, you know, directing track and stuff and telling people what they're supposed to do. So that's, that was definitely different. And uh, just, I think I'm getting comfortable with everybody. I'm getting close to everybody, but um the vets, like Odyssey, you know, she's been helping me a lot. Uh, Elizabeth, Monique Balins, like they've been helping me a lot and they've been making my uh, transition to the pros very easy. We'll go to Raphael Haynes from the Three Point Conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Ari, hope all is well. Wanted to ask you, who was that player in the WNBA past or present that inspired you or when you first started watching basketball, learning about basketball, you wanted to play like, or you just liked. And then 
who is that player right now that's in the NBA that you are looking forward to playing? Yeah, um, growing up, I used to always love to watch Cappy Pondex. Like, she was my favorite, and she was just a crappy player. Get to her spots, because she's able to break her defender down, and just, you know, she was a bucket. So I really, you know, I really watched her game, looked up to her. And currently in the W, um, I would probably say Diana. I can't, I can't wait to play against her. Next question is from Kenya Hurd from Made for the W. Go ahead, Kenya. Hi, Ari, it's Kenya from Made for the W. Um, just curious, what are some of your first year goals that you have uh, for playing in the league? Personally, I mean, personally playing and professionally. Some goals that I have, I would say, to shoot over, you know, 30% from the three. Um, that's always been a goal of mine, just continue to be like a, a knockdown shooter. I would probably say uh, having less than, you know, two turnovers a game. Um, Got to take care of the ball in the pros, especially being a point guard. And just also, like, I want to continue to create havoc with my defensive abilities. Uh, I would love to make the all-defensive team as a rookie. Um, I would love to. And just my ultimate goal is to win a WBA championship. And I'm pretty sure if you ask my teammates and my coaches, theirs would be the same as well. We'll go back to Brandon Sudge for the last question. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, um... So I remember talking to you on draft night and you spoke about the excitement of playing with Kennedy and Courtney and Odyssey. Um, we're getting some time with them now. Um, has it lived up to what you thought of playing with them and just speak on what that whole d d d dynamic is like right now? Yeah, definitely. Playing alongside Courtney, Kennedy and Odyssey definitely lived up to the hype. Um, it's been a battle since I've been in training camp uh, when we play against each other. And um, when we're guarding each other, it's no easy buckets. Like we're making it hard for each other. And I mean, if we compete like that, I mean, there's not a chance for our opponents when we play against them. But I mean, it's been amazing. And they've been helping me along the way. So like I said, they've been making things really easy for me. And I'm definitely soaking up everything, being a sponge when they're talking to me. So I mean, I really can't wait to see what we do on Friday. All right, thanks so much, Ari. Thank you. Do you have a question for Courtney? Go ahead and raise your hand, I'll call on you. We'll start off with Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Courtney, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. <laughs> Good to hear. Um, so you've obviously been around the league for a little while. Is there something that sets the specific roster apart? Um, from other teams you've been on and other rosters you've been on? Um, I think that we super fast. You know, we got some athletes on this team, uh, crazy athletes uh, from the one all the way to the five. So I think um, that's going to make us different this year for sure. Next question is from Brandon Sudge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, uh, Courtney, um, if you could put the – uh, the uh, group of guards, I guess, with you and Kennedy and Ari and Odyssey, if you could describe you guys in one word, what would it be? Fast. That was basic, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, following up on that, though, like, um, how exciting is it to come in every day knowing that you get to work with them? Oh. Uh. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> it ain't nothing that I like wake up and I'm like, yo, I'm super excited to go see these girls. Nah, but they don't. I mean, they so cool teammates. You feel me? Uh, next question is from Chantel Jennings from The Athletic. Go ahead, Chantel. Courtney, you've always had a great mid-range game, obviously, but last year, more than three quarters of your shot attempts were from the mid-range, which was the highest percentage of your career, and you also shot the highest percentage of your career from the mid-range last year. I'm just curious, was that something that defenses were, you know, giving you last year that you were able to do that, or did you come into last season with a different focus or work on something in order to allow you to do that last year? Am I in a bubble? Are you talking about? Are you talking about in the bubble? 
Hello. Hello. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> no, we'll go. Next question uh, is from Kenya Heard, made for the W. Go ahead, Kenny. I didn't answer her question. She went away or something. Hey, Courtney, it's Kenya from Made for the W. We're heading into the 25th season of the WNBA. You got good new uniforms, new swag. Uh, what sneakers are you going to be rocking on game day coming up? Man, I don't even really get into sneakers like that. I'm, I'm one of them players that once I break a shoe in, I kind of just stick with that same shoe the whole season. So I've been rocking with uh these Kyrie's. I think they're Kyrie's. So I, I, I probably just stick them out. But I also had a pair of shoes that I broke in overseas. I was like some Kobe's. So I might rock with them too. I ain't no telling, but I'm, I'm one of them players. I don't really get into like changing my shoes like every game like some players do. I just rock with like one shoe. I, I'm more comfort versus fashion. Spencer Nussbaum, we'll go back to you. Go ahead. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that you're probably the best trash talker on the team. Um, but do you know who's maybe who's maybe the second best? And just in general, what are your thoughts about the team culture so far? Second best? Uh, I know girls don't know how to talk trash for real. I'm, I'm teaching them. I'm, I'm trying to teach them how to get their trash game talk up. So they just got to they just got to keep learning from me, man. We going to get them. Questions from Raphael Haynes for the three point conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Miss Courtney, what's going on? How you doing? What's happening? I'm all right. Good, good. Wanted to ask you, first of all, um, since it's the uh, 25th year, who was yeah. that one person in the WNBA that you were, um, I guess you looked up to, that, that inspired you to play basketball? And then also, can you tell me about the um, first time you, well, not first time, but the time you had your welcome to the WNBA moment? whether it was a rookie or whenever? Mm. So it wasn't really no player that really, like, inspired me to who. I feel like I was from, like, a little small town where it was kind of just what I what I rock with, like, neighborhood kids outside. So that's just kind of what we did. Um, but my favorite player is Cappy Pondex, you know. I like the way she carries herself. I like her swag. I like the way she hoop. Um, so that was my favorite player growing up for sure. Um, and what was that last question? Oh, my welcome doing? to the league. Yeah, so my yeah. welcome to the league moment was uh, it was my rookie season, and I had to guard Ali Quigley. And I couldn't believe that she was killing me the way she was. Um, so that 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 humbled me for sure. <laughs> uh, last question. We'll go back to Brandon Sudge. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, Courtney, yeah. can you speak on the expectations that you have? Uh, for this team as a whole this season. I mean, I know that you guys have have handled a lot already with the coaching change, but you guys feel like y'all can make a playoff run this year? My expectation any year is to win a championship. So that's kind of how I'm coming. <laughs> you know, I ain't going to never sit up in front of nobody and say that I want anything less than that. So that's my goal. All right, Court, thanks so much. Y'all be easy. You have a question for Crystal? Go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. We'll start with Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, just a, a really general question to start off. Um, what are your expectations for the season and what do you think that you specifically add to this team? Um, it's a good question. I look at myself as an X factor for this team, you know, um, a piece of the glue that's going to help us stick. Um, I, my expectations are just day to day, um, basing it from yesterday and just trying to carry on and basing last, uh, we had two pieces, two preseason games. So I'm just basing last preseason game from the next one, not necessarily comparing, but just, you know, raising that level, trying to raise our level every time we play, every time we practice. Um, and of course, winning, winning is number one for me. Any last questions for Crystal?
Next question is from Raphael Haynes from the three-point conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Crystal. Um, Raphael Haynes with the three-point conversion. When I wanted to ask you, um, we're keeping it light here today, so I wanted to ask you, as far as the team, who is that one person that's constantly got you laughing? I, mean, I know y'all have a bunch of um, uh, funny people on the team with, with Cheyenne, uh, Courtney, <laughs> Kennedy, and such. Who, who is that one person, or you can name multiple that has you just dying laughing the whole practice during the training camp? Uh, like you said, uh, good question, Raphael. I would say... Cheyenne. Cheyenne makes me laugh at myself. So I'll ask her something and we just laugh all day. Kalani makes me laugh all day. Like you said, Courtney is pretty funny. So we all have a, a good sense of humor. Everybody's pretty honest too. So that's even, you guys can imagine how that goes. So yeah. Thank you. No problem. All right, Crystal, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. You have a question for Kalani? Your hand, I'll call on you. First question's from Brandon Sudge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, uh, Kalani. Um, I wanted to ask you about the uh, coaching change over to Coach Mike and training camp. You're obviously in an interesting spot because you're a Baylor alum. So, obviously, your emotions had to be kind of mixed there. Um can you give me your perspective on the whole thing and how the transition has been under uh, Coach Mike? Uh, um, Coach Mike's pretty cool. Um, the transition is quite smooth. Um, Coach, Coach knows his X's and O's. Um, Coach Nikki and I, I was kind of still fairly new. I kept, I had COVID last year, so I didn't really get the time that I really needed with the team. So. Um, I just, you know, I just want to thank Coach Nicky for believing in me and um, taking a chance on me. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, she's a part of the Baylor fam now, so Sikkim Bears um, or Sikkim Tigers. <laughs> I'm kind of torn. Uh, next question is from Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Kalani. I just want to ask about, you know, with this revamped roster, what do you see as the team's biggest strength? And when you show up to training camp every day, what's the one thing you look forward to the most? Uh, definitely our strength would probably be running in transition. Not many teams are going to be wanting to run with uh, Gary McDonald, Odyssey Sims, Kennedy Carter. Um, you know, I hardly want to run with him in practice. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, uh, running in transition, not many teams are going to run and run with us. Uh, we've got size inside, different weapons from inside. So, um you know, we can give you a different five every night, you know, for different teams. Um, I think that's what's so special about this team. Um, and when I wake up and come to training camp, um, just the energy. Everybody loves, we love each other. Like, um, I wish we could keep all 13, you know, um, but it's only 12 spots. And um, that's unfortunate because we were really vibing and getting along. Next question is from Raphael Haynes from Three Point Conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Kalani. Uh, hope all is well. I have a um, two-part question. The first question is, have you learned anything from the other um, so-called bigs with Cheyenne and Elizabeth? Have you learned anything from training camp? And then the second part is, I've asked um, each lady, I think mo most of them, um, about who's the funniest. And of course, they all, they've been pointing to you as far as being funny and, and um, trying to, yes. But I want to ask you, they've been saying it, but who, who has been making you laugh and um, got you cracking up and just enjoying your day of practice during training camp? Oh, man, it's a tie between Crystal Bradford and Courtney Williams. Uh, those two are absolute clowns, OK? Um, but I'm sorry, what was the other question? What was the first? I'll answer the second question first. <laughs> have you have you learned from Elizabeth, um, Cheyenne, and the other bigs on the team? What have you learned from them during training camp, if you have? Oh, oh um, Cheyenne is a huge motivator and encouragement, something that I was missing my rookie season um, from a vet post player. But um, yeah, like, she, you know, she's pushing me when I'm tired or, you know, if I don't do something like 100%, she knows. And, you know, with E, 
E is more so the X's and O's. She's helping me with plays. Like, I just have a lot of support from my vets, um, my veteran post players, uh, whether it's X's and O's, they'll pull me to the side. Uh, offensively, you know, um, just taking a chance on shooting the three, you know, she's she like, step back a little bit, you know, you shoot that long two, step back, you know, so I'm getting a lot of encouragement and it's just helping me um, be more versatile in my game. So, yes. Kalani, you know you're funny. <laughs> I am. Uh, I am a clown. <laughs> Next question is from Devante Hughes. Go ahead, Devante. Um, hey, Kalani. Um, what are some of your personal goals for this season? Uh, my personal goal is to extend my range to the three, um, be better on defense. I have a defensive goal, you know, my lateral movement, um, screen defense, and just help the team with that in whatever way I can. I know last year I couldn't do that with COVID. Um, and, you know, my conditioning wasn't up to par. So um, every day me and Cheyenne are doing extra conditioning after practice. So, you know, that's and that goes back to that encouragement, you know. Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead. Hey, Kalani. Uh, Courtney said that no one else on the team can really tr talk trash other than her. Um, is there any truth to that statement? And who do you think is the second best or best trash talker on the team? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? I talked to Courtney. I'm not a talker, but Courtney will make you talk. You know, it, it, it depends on who she's talking to. But I had to say Kennedy, Kennedy Carter, for sure. Kennedy's not going to back down to nobody. If somebody says something to her, she's going to say it right back. And um, she has that fire, you know, so them two be going at it a little bit. We'll go back to Brandon Sudge for the last question. Go ahead, Brandon. Uh, Kalani, Co Coach Mike said earlier, he said, if y'all play the right way, y'all can be a problem. If you don't, then y'all can have some problems. Can you tell me what the right way looks like for y'all to play? And in terms of expectations, do you, do you feel like you guys can be, can get yourself back into that playoff mix? Oh, I definitely think we could. Um, I think the right way means uh, when we all together and we're all on the same page and we're all executing, it looks really good out there. Uh, first group, second group, doesn't matter. Um, when we play together and you know, when everything's going and it's flowing the right way, we look really dangerous. We really do. So I think uh, we're the underdog coming in this season, but, um, you know, and we'll take that. It's a chip on our shoulder, you know? All right. Thank you so much, Connie. All right. We've got Monique Billings here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. Start off with Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. There we go. Um, hey, how are you doing today? Good, thank you. Uh, I guess I just want to start off with a really simple general question. Um, what do you see as the biggest strengths or weaknesses of this team? Biggest strengths are speed. I think we're really just a quick team. Um, our focus this season is to be disruptive, specifically on defense. So, um, yeah, I would say that's definitely our um, just the high point of our team. And then the weakness, something that we can work on. Um, offensive rebounding, I mean, so, excuse me, defensive rebounding has been an emphasis in practice. So I think that's something that we can get better at. Devontae Hughes, go ahead. Hey, Monique, I wanted to know, um, could you clear us a little rundown of what your mentality is going into this season? Yeah, no, my mentality is um, I've always been a blue collar player, always do the dirty work. So just um, be what my team needs when they need it, wherever they need it, um, on both ends of the floor, be effective, be consistent, and um, to contribute in every way possible. Next question is from Brandon Sudge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Honeyka, um, I was talking to a few of your teammates, and they were saying that you guys have potential to be dangerous. Coach Mike said if things go right, you guys can be a problem. Can you think of an example through this training camp where you've seen 
the potential that y'all have um, in, in this year. Totally. I mean, there's just weapons at every single position. So it's like, whether you're playing offense, defense, like you can't take a break. You can't take a playoff because you're going to get burned. Like this is a true professional team. Like just like I said, in every single position, everyone um, has their strengths and they know how to use their strengths. So this is a really special team. We'll go to Raphael Haynes from the Three Point Conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, how you doing today? Uh, and, I, and I see you. I see what you're doing. Uh, but I have a question. I, I wanted to ask you that um, first, well, two-part question. First, with the 25th season, just talking about the history of the game, was there anybody, whether it's current or in the past, that you watched when you were young that you really liked and whether you patterned your game after or was just your favorite player. And then the second part is um, Manax and the ladies, who was that person or people who have um, made you laugh and been the funniest during turn account? So Candace Parker is someone who I would watch when I was younger, maybe like 10, 11 years old. I'd go to the games and watch her. Now it's crazy, you know, playing against her. Um, idols become rivals real quick. And then funniest in training camp, Crystal Bradford, hilarious. She's naturally funny, always keeps the team laughing and has really good vibes. Thank you. We'll go back to Spencer Nussbaum for the last question. Go ahead, Spencer. Sure. Um, I, I think a lot of the questions so far have been about the backcourt, especially in training camp. I'm curious if you'd kind of touch on what the front court's mentality is going into the season um, and what your expectations are. Um, from that standpoint? Yeah. yeah, I mean, our front court is super aggressive. Um, I think the emphasis should be on both the front court and the back court. I think we work really well together, hand in hand. We're building our chemistry. And um, I think it's just a really strong team dynamic all together. All right. Thanks so much, Mom. Thank you. All right, we have Elizabeth Williams here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. First question's from Brandon Sedge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, hey, Elizabeth, I wanted to see if you could take me through um, kind of these couple of weeks of training camp, especially in terms of the coaching change. I know you've been here for a while. I know that you're kind of like a, kind of like a leader on this team. So, um, how were you guys able to kind of transition from being in Nikki's system for so long to to uh, being coached by uh, Mike and everything? Yeah, I mean, I think the system actually doesn't change very much. Um, Coach Mike was already in charge of a lot of the offense when Coach Nikki was here. So I think that kind of allowed for a pretty smooth transition. And I know he doesn't really want to change too much. So um, it, it's been all right. And I think the team has had a really positive attitude and we remain competitive, whether it's in the preseason games or in camp itself. And so we're just going to continue to keep that energy. Next question's from Raphael Haynes from Three Point Conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Elizabeth. Hope all is well. Um, I have a two-part question. First part is um, just knowing that it's the 25th season, what was the player that you grew up, whether you idolized or just was your favorite player, whether it was... Be lazy. Yeah, right, can you hear me? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. All right, sorry about that. Um, hey, Elizabeth, I have a two-part question. First part was um, just knowing it's the 25th season, and you know we're celebrating. Was there any player that you grew up watching that you say was your favorite or you idolized or wanted to play like? And then the second part is knowing that you've been in Atlanta for a while and you've seen this transformation of this team. What do you like about this team now and the, the, the parts that you all are bringing in? Okay, to answer the first question, 
I would say probably Lisa Leslie was one of my favorites to watch. And I also really like watching Yolanda Griffith. Um, she was just like, she rebounded like crazy. She was a competitor and obviously Lisa is a legend um, at the center position. And for our team now, I mean, I think speed kills. We have a lot of speed. We're excited to play fast. Even the post players, we have a lot of speed as well. And I think we have a nice balance of youth and veterans um, and experience. And we want to be competitive and we want to find that balance between youth and experience um, to remain a really competitive team throughout the season. Thank you. Next question is from Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Um, I wanted to ask, I know you've always had an interest in medicine. Um, you had the e Talks with Doc series. You're on pre-med track in college. Um, can you talk a little bit about the W's efforts to get people vaccinated and educated about vaccines? And you know, if you see yourself having a role in all of that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, our union has done a really good job of connecting us with doctors, epidemiologists, public health experts, um, and giving us access to them to ask questions about the vaccine and about vaccine education, because I think that's really important, especially when COVID is disproportionately affecting Black and Brown people. Um, and so I've tried to make sure that players have any education that they need. Um, and, you know, the more vaccinated players, the better. Next question is from Devonte Hughes. Go ahead, Devonte. Um, hey, Elizabeth. Um, give us a stat line. What you, kind of statement do you want to make in game one? A stat line of game one? Uh, like individually? Yes. <laughs> um, I think a double-double would make a statement. I know our rebounding is something that we did not do so well in the past couple of years. And uh, so any stat line with a double-double, I think, would be impactful. And last question, we'll go back to Brandon Sedge. Go ahead, Brandon. Elizabeth, um, we were talking to Coach Mike, and he was saying that if you guys play the right way, that y'all can be a problem. Um, can you tell me a story or a moment in training camp where you realize the potential that y'all have? I think we've had plenty of those moments. I think um, most recently, probably, Ari was bringing the ball up the court, just like zooming past everyone, swung it to Shatori in the corner for a three, and it was just like bang, bang. And I think that was a moment where we saw our speed like in real time um, and saw that even if you're back, like there was really nothing you could do. And there have been a lot of moments like that where everyone steps back and says, whoa, like we really have some talented players and some quick players. Um, I lied, we do have one more question. Um, let's go to Alex Glaze from 11 Live. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Elizabeth, I'm just <clears throat> curious, you know, I, it feels like over the years, the WNBA is getting a lot more um, attention, you know, from the, the orange hoodies the NBA players are wearing uh, to, you know, in the bubble, the, you guys were getting a lot of attention for, you know, social justice issues and your stance on that and just, what does this next step look like, especially this year, you know, as you guys have a lot of new things, you know, with the 25th, uh, you know, year, just what is the next step for, for the WNBA and how do you guys continue to build on this momentum? Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at our team and even with all of our changes, that they're good. And I think we've done a good job of, you know, rolling with the punches and embracing those changes and, in regards to social justice, I mean, that work really never stops. I think a lot of times we see we see progress and, and we see, um, you know, some positive feedback. And then we're also reminded of the reality of, of the times that we're in. And I don't think that WMA players are going to back down. I think we're going to continue to find unique ways to make sure that our voices are heard um, and ultimately do the right thing. All right. Thanks so much, E. Thank you. All right, we've got Cheyenne Parker here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand and I'll call on you. Big selfie, sorry. May I do Maggie Hattenberg, yes. we'll start with you. Hi, Cheyenne. I'm excited I get to still talk to you even though you're not in Chicago anymore. 
Um, I wanted to know basically how it's going, how you feel in your new setting, in your new city, all of that. It's going great. I'm so happy here. Um, just so much support and um, unity and love. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm really enjoying it. Um, my teammates are really great. The staff is great. The new ownership is awesome. Um, I'm fitting in really well. Next question is from Brandon Sudge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, uh, Cheyenne, kind of following up on that. I mean, it had to be kind of an interesting spot for you signing as a free agent, expecting to play for Nikki Collin, and then having a coaching change in the middle. How did you kind of deal with that? And can you elaborate on that for me, please? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was it was really unfortunate when um, when we got the news about Nikki um, having to leave. Um, and then even the GM, you know, those were the two people that I was I was talking to during the entire process. So, yeah, it was um, for a second. It was it was a little shaky um, emotionally, obviously. But the one thing that I have experienced throughout my career is that happens all the time. Um, it's a part of the business. It's something that we kind of get adapted to, you know, whether it be a player, a coach, whatever. It just becomes something that you just have to adapt, immediately adapt. Um, so it wasn't a short, it was a very short, um, shaky moment. You know, I had confidence in knowing that um, what I bring to this team hasn't changed. You know, um, the reason I came to this team hasn't changed. Nikki was a great, great coach. Um, it would have been great to play for her, but you know, that wasn't in the cards and that's just how, that's just how life happens. You know, you have to kind of just take the, take the punches as they come. Um, Raphael Haynes from Three Point Conversion, go ahead. Miss Cheyenne, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? I'm well, I'm well, thank you. Uh, I have a two part question. The first question is, who is that one WNBA player growing up that you love to play. I mean, you love to watch play and like was your favorite player. And then the second part is um, a few people mentioned you as one of the funniest um, team team members for the dream. Who, who makes you laugh? Who, you, who do you think is the funniest? Whether it's one or, you know, two or three. That's funny that they said that already. I haven't even started yet. Okay. Um, Okay, the first part of the question. Remind me. I'm sorry, I forgot the which, first question. Which, which player growing up did you? Um, what was your favorite, or did you love watching play? I watched Candace, Candace Parker. That was um, who I really, I really liked her her game and how she was able to like dribble and um, just she was so versatile at six four. Um, I looked up to that, you know, I, I aspired to, to be that type of player. Um, so it was definitely Candace growing up. Um, and then the funniest teammate that I have so far, man, they, it's a few, it's a few, to be honest. There are quite some characters. I really love them. They're great. But, ooh, Courtney is funny. She's crazy, though. But I think, honestly, I think Crystal Bradford, so far, she has been comedy. Like, she don't even be trying. Like, she's very funny. Like, I can't even. <laughs> I'll give y'all an example. <laughs> so last practice, we had a really good play. Like, just really nice, really nice play. So after the play, we was all hype and everything. And she came in the huddle and was like, that's some chemistry right there. Y'all on a dinner date. Like, <laughs> She just, and it's just right off the dome, you know, like she doesn't try. She just comes up with these funny things and you just can't help but laugh. But yeah, definitely CB. She's had me laughing the entire training camp. So we actually have an internal question here from Crystal Bradford. Go ahead, Crystal. Did I hear that right? I can't hear anything. Uh, yes, this is a call from Crystal Bradford. I'm here asking you a question. Can you hear me? 
I'm not hearing. I'm hearing like something real faint, but I can't hear. Hey, we'll go to a question from Sylvia. Go ahead, Sylvia. Hi, Shayan. How are you? You look beautiful, by the way. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, what is your personal goal this season? We seen we seen during your IG, you'll be working on your handles. Any chance you'll be breaking ankles this season? You know what? It's definitely <laughs> that, that can happen. Um, anybody, it's any given day. You never know. Um, but yeah, uh, personally, yeah, just improving all the way around as a player. You know, um, I mentioned earlier, like we're not having uh, an all star uh, this year, but um, that's still something that I aspire to be. I want to be an all star, considered an all star, you know, just be a dominant post presence for this team. Um, so that's my personal goal for sure. Cheyenne, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, we've actually got an internal question here from Crystal Bradford. Okay. okay. What's going on? Um, I hope you're well. My question today is, where do you get your energy from and what keeps us, what makes you have such a good sense of humor every single day? That's a good question, Crystal, thank you. Um, my energy, I really, I wish I could, I wish I could tell you, um, it's kind of like you, you know, it just, it comes naturally that, that energy. And that's what I was saying earlier. Like I used to always say my energy is unmatched because I do bring this just crazy energy, you know, to practice every day. It doesn't matter whether I'm in a bad mood, good mood. It's just something that I pride myself in, you know, um, especially when we play hard and, and, and there's a good play, like my energy is unmatched, but then I meet these amazing teammates who match my energy. Um, and it's the first time in my career that I really had players just really match my crazy energy. And, you know, yeah, sometimes it's crazy. Um, it's, it's like, damn, relax. And it's like, nah, I'm not going to relax because my energy is just crazy. Um, but I, I want my teammates to feed off of it and they do. And I feed off of their energy and it's been really great. Um, and then as far as my sense of humor, I think I was just always pretty goofy, you know, um the sense of humor just is just natural as well <laughs> it, it it doesn't it, it, it takes a lot to really you know get me get me in in in, in some type of mood so thanks diane see you around <laughs> thanks diane we'll see you around okay thank you <laughs> um next question is from alex glaze from nbc go ahead alex Excuse me. Hi, Cheyenne. Hi. Uh, just, I mean, you've been around the league for a couple of years now. Just how have you seen the the momentum and the energy and excitement around the WNBA grow over the years? Uh, both, I mean, I guess in the league and outside, just from from a fan perspective as well. Man, um, seven years to be exact, Alex. Um, but yes. Throughout my entire career, it's like, it's gone just skyrocket, you know, um, from being recognized um, to being, to being, to seeing, to seeing WNBA commercials, to seeing uh, WNBA billboards and um, advertisements in different cities, things like that has grown tremendously. Um, and it's just exciting. It's really exciting. And it's, it's humbling and it, it really makes me proud as well because it's just like, um, we're doing that, you know, this little league, this 144 little league is really making an impact that for women. Um, so it's really exciting to see the growth and to see the numbers continue to grow. Even, even college basketball gets more views than it ever has um, over the past couple of years. So it just shows that women's basketball period is just a growing um, entity. And last question, we'll go back to Brandon Sedge. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, following up on what you said about... Uh... Brandon, we lost you. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, lost you. Can you hear me? Yep, following up on what I said. Last yeah, about, uh, about the comment in the huddle. Um, so you said it was after a 
good uh, play. So, 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 so do you remember what happened? Yes, I can tell you. Um, so on offense, we were doing um, offense, defense, offense. So we got to stop. Boom. Offense. Courtney hit me with a with a really nice pocket pass in the paint. The defense came, and then I hit Elizabeth with a really nice little touch pass for the layup. And it was real pretty, real nice, real good execution, good ball movement. And then we came back down and executed a great defensive play that we were just working on a defensive scheme um, and got a steal. Um, and it was basically a stop, score, stop. So that's something that's really good when you're doing offense, defense, uh, defense, offense, defense. Um, and it was really, really good. Like we were all really hyped after the end of the sequence. And um, yeah, so it was definitely warranted. <laughs> all right, thanks so much, Shane. Appreciate you. All right, thanks. All right, we've got Odyssey Sims here. If you have a question for yeah, her, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll start it off with Brandon Sudge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Odyssey. Um, I wanted to ask about the backcourt, obviously, with you and Kennedy and Courtney and uh, uh, I think I'm forgetting somebody, but um, oh, well. Um, how special can y'all be? Like, how special of a dynamic is it with your speed and uh, – your in the backcourt. Oh, I'm excited to be on this team and uh, play with the players that I have around me. Um, I feel like our back, our backcourt is the fastest, will be the fastest in the league this year. Um, it's going to be pretty hard to keep up with. So, I mean, good luck to the other teams, but trying to keep up. But, I mean, we're going to be running. Like, we're going to be running and gunning. Um, I think we'll be one of the top teams uh, for sure in transition points, baskets, getting to the line. We have a lot of um, lot of, lot of, us that can get to the free throw line and can create. So I'm just excited for the first game, of course, the entire season. But it's, it's just going to be scary when I think about it. Like, I get chills thinking about, like, the players that we have. And it's, it feels like it's almost unfair, but, like, I'm excited and I'm ready for it. Questions from Raphael Haynes from Three Point Conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Odyssey, how are you doing today? Good. Good. I have a two part question. Uh, first, who was that person that you grew up watching in the WNBA that you that that you say is your favorite player and or wanted to play like? And then the second part is been asking the ladies who is the funniest team uh, teammate that's been in training camp or you can name multiple so the first question i'm i mean i've watched a lot of players there wasn't anybody in particular that um i want to be like um i think diana tarasi is a goat and yeah i just really like her a lot i just think she's She's incredible. Um, it's like she's getting better the older she gets, which is kind of scary, but like, good. And, you know, on a team who the funniest? Yes. Me. <laughs> me first. Then, you know, then I can name everybody else. It's me, then Crystal, Courtney, Kennedy, Strick. Kalani, Ari, everybody thinks she's quiet, but she's funny. Don't let her fool y'all, just FYI. And really all, all my teammates, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I think everybody's pretty funny. Next question is from Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Odyssey, uh, happy belated Mother's Day. Thank um, you. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like balancing life on and off the court, you know, as a mother, as well as an elite basketball player? Um, you know, I thought it would be a lot harder than what it has been. I've been here for almost a month. Um, my child is always taken care of. 
um, and I'm at practice. So um, it definitely is different. It's a def definitely a, a, an adjustment. Um, but I like this like full time athlete parent role. Um, I'm a power parent, of course. I love my child um, a whole lot. So it's uh, definitely taking some time to adjust to, but like it's pretty cool. Not even gonna lie. Next question is from Alex Glaze from Eleven Alive. Go ahead, Alex. Hey, Odyssey. So, you know, I was talking to Cheyenne about this and, you know, she mentioned, uh, you know, how there are now, you know, WNBA commercials and, you know, the, the growth of the game over the past couple of years is, you know, it's very noticeable. Just wondering, uh, you know, because you're you've been around the game for a long time now, just what does the next step look like in this and how can you all continue to grow the game and, and build on this momentum? Um, I think Personally, from a from our uh, athlete standpoint, I think that with athletes coming in, we can't worry about or depend on um, endorsements. And I mean, like as far as like being signed, you know, shoot deals and all that. I think that you kind of got to branch out and get a feel for like more publicity. Like you know, like there's there like you know Nike, Adidas, Reebok. Um, Converse, they're doing, you know, they still have their public, their publicity with their players. But I mean, as far as like different, like I know Cheyenne um, and Kalani, they both like, they're doing like, I think they're modeling. Um, I think that looks good for the women's game. Um, something different. Um, not to take away from, like I said, nothing about the, the shoe deals or anything. But um, I think like the more, not feminine, but like the more, I guess it's like, what am I trying to say? The more we not show on Instagram, but like, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. If you understand what I'm saying, like um, just being able to branch off and just do something different, whether it's like modeling, like everything that you have, like endorsements on top of like your own thing. I think that'll help. I don't know. I, I think I answered the question, maybe not, sorry. A lot of interviews today. Um, our last question comes from Mad Maggie Hendricks with Valley Sports. Go ahead, Maggie. Hi, Odyssey. Um, I'm wondering, there's obviously you're new. There's a, there's quite a few new players and rookies. So I'm wondering how everyone is meshing and if that got interrupted at all by the coaching change. Um, you know, we're here to do our job. That's it. Um, we have our first game Friday. It's already, what, Monday? Um, we're, we've are we made a commitment to just continue to work hard um, and play together and stay together. Um, I think you guys will see Friday what we've been working on. Um, there won't be any problems about uh, who's going to have the ball, who's not. Um, everybody always, you guys love to talk about Atlanta has too many guards. How is this going to work? How is this going to work? I'm tired of you guys saying that. You know what I mean? Like, seriously, like, yes, we have a lot of guards. Yes, this, that. You guys keep talking about, well, this player may not mesh with this player. Just wait until Friday. Wait until we start the season and then come back and ask and see. But we'll, we'll show you guys a little preview of what, what, uh, what we've been doing. All right. Thanks so much, Odyssey. Thank you. All right, we've got Shakina Strickland here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. First question comes from Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Strick, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm good. Um, I wanted to ask, you've obviously been around the league for a while. Um, is there something specific that sets this roster apart from the other ones you've been on? And um, I think everyone in the team is really interested in making that championship push. What do you guys still need to do to get there? Sorry, can you repeat the first question? <laughs> yeah, um, no worries. Uh, you've been on obviously a lot of different rosters um, or been around the league for a while. What sets this specific roster apart? What set this roster? 
what sets this roster apart? Like what's different from this team oh. compared to where you've played in the past? Oh, okay. uh, this team, uh, though, with so many different personalities um, on and off the court, but I definitely, this team this year, I think what the guards we have, the quickness, um, I think we have all the pieces, uh, the quickness, the shooters, the, like everything. So um, I'm really excited to see uh, how this season is. Maggie Hendricks from Valley Sports, go ahead. Hi, Shakina. Um, I'm wondering how the past week in particular has gone, um, how, if things have changed or how it feels now with a different coach. Um, it's actually been going really good. Um, I don't think much has changed. Uh, still things that we uh, definitely knew we need to work on uh, for the season. We're still working on the energy is still there, the intensity, the competitive Pettiness is all still there, um, and everyone is just still focused. And I think he was just really ready to get the uh, start playing. So it's just trying to get better and just build our chemistry up uh, this past week. So I don't think it hasn't been much of a change. Um, uh, Coach Mike and Coach D have been doing great, and they, they're keeping us going. Let's call for questions for Strick. All right, Strick, you're good. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right, we've got Kennedy Carter here. If you have a question for her, go ahead and raise your hand. I'll call on you. We'll start with Spencer Nussbaum from the next. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Kennedy, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, I think in year one, everyone saw, you know, you have the acceleration, you have the body control, you have the ability to stop on a dime, score inside. Um, what's one thing teams are going to see this year and go, how are we supposed to stop this? What, what new have you added to your game? Uh, I honestly think it's not just me. I think the pieces that we have um, will be the determining factor on what I'm able to do. I think we have guards here that can really sled the floor and create um, their own shots. So with me finding myself and finding their self, I think, that's kind of where I am with my game. It's not so much as what I'm bringing to the table. I mean, I work on everything every single day. I think my teammates are doing a great job of making me better, and we're going to make each other look good for sure. Next question is from Brandon Sudge from the AJC. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, uh, Kennedy, I wanted to ask you uh, about the guards that you all have with uh, Ari and uh, Courtney and Odyssey. Um, I mean, like, so does it excite you to have that dynamic of uh, of all that talent around you in the backcourt? And then also, in terms of the team... Um, can you speak up just a little bit? Can you hear me? Just a, You're a little low. I don't know why. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so I was just asking, like, in terms of the guards... How special of a dynamic is that to be able to play with that talent around you? And then secondly, in terms of the team, um, how do you feel like this team has potential to, to make a playoff run as compared to what happened uh, last year? Uh, just with the guards on the first question, we have a lot of guards that can spread the floor and spread the offense. I think what we're really emphasizing this season is space. I think we're we're short, we're quick, we're really fast, and we can really run teams really up out of the gym when we really um, put our our minds to it. So that's one of the things. I mean, we'll be quick, we'll be able to push and transition and score easy. Um, so that's what I'm most excited about. We've got guards that can shoot the three, that can create, and we really can find each other. We're really um, learning each other every day in practice. And then I think what makes us different is we just have really different pieces this year. I mean, we bring a Cheyenne. We brought in Eric, we brought in Odyssey, who is a lockdown defender, a leader, and also a scorer. So I think that just bringing different pieces to the table from what we already have will make us better. I think we'll definitely be a playoff team this year. Next question is from Raphael Haynes from the Three Point Conversion. Go ahead, Raphael. Hey, Kennedy, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm well. So I have a two part question. First question is you know, knowing that, um, you, you are a big Iverson fan. Is there any particular moment 
that's like your best moment or memory of Iverson in the NBA? Yeah. And then, Seth, oh, go ahead. You can answer that part if you want. Oh, um, I guess my favorite moment would definitely be when he crossed Michael Jordan. I Once I seen that crossover, after I seen it, I literally – played it over and over and over again. And I literally can do the same crossover. I just don't do it just because it's it's almost a carry. It's a little street ball. It's, but I really love the crossover. And once I've seen him do that, that's what made me want to take my handles to another level and be a great ball handler. Okay. And the second part of my question, even though I didn't like to answer because I'm from Chicago, but no, the second part <laughs> of my um, question is, who is the funniest teammate so far? I've asked all the ladies this, and they've given me um, different answers. So who do you think is the funniest teammate or teammates? Funniest teammate? Uh, man, I'm going to have to give it to my girl, Court. I think Courtney is the funniest teammate I have. Um, I mean, just talk about somebody that comes in the gym every day. You don't know what's going on in their back background or what's going on in their everyday life. I mean, she just brings energy and passion to the gym. She can make any teammate laugh or pick anyone up. So I would say court. And then of course, second, the goofiest person on the team is Crystal. She's just a big goofball. So Crystal Baffer and Courtney Williams. Next question is from Kenya Heard from Made for the W. Go ahead, Kenya. Hey, Kennedy, it's Kenya from Made from the W. Um, what do you feel you that you can Good, how are you? What do you feel that you most improved on um, since last year? And, and what are you looking forward to for the new season? You know, my teammate Mo told me the other day that I'm really growing and being a leader. I think that's the area that I don't see, but my teammates are starting to see. So I really appreciate that I'm trying to be a leader and be more vocal for my team. Um, of course, on the court, just expanding my three ball, being more confident and shooting the ball a little bit more. That's an area that I'm working on. And last questions back to Spencer Nussbaum. Go ahead, Spencer. Yeah, so I was asking Courtney and she said that no one else on the team is really good at trash talk other than her. Um, and Kalani for her own right said that you were in second place. I I'm curious who you think the best trash talkers on the team are. I mean, I definitely think um, I'm in a race, but see, I'm different. See, I'm only gonna talk if you talk to me. I'm gonna do my work first, of course. But once you start talking to me, it's going to get real ugly for you because I definitely can try to talk a little bit back in, in my game. I, I'm pretty sure I can back it up. So Courtney, Courtney got that for sure. And we get that a lot in practice, which makes us better. But I think I'm up there in the races with them, too. All right. Thanks so much, Ken. Appreciate it. Thank you.